Hi there and welcome to chapter 3.2 from Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. Uh, this chapter we're going to go over histograms. So I'm going to put this into full screen mode. There we go. Okay. A histogram, histogram, it's a type of bar graph, right? So this is, this is a histogram over here. And basically the idea is that the horizontal scale down here, that's the horizontal scale, that represents classes of data values, right? And the vertical scale here represents frequencies or counts or relative frequencies, right? Okay. So the way you get to these is you actually start with a frequency distribution from the last section from chapter 3.1. So here we have the classes, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and here are the frequencies. So we're going to basically take this information and convert it into a graph, a bar graph specifically. So down along the x-axis, the horizontal axis, I'm putting in the class boundaries. So that's delineating my bars. All right? Notice there's no gap between the bars because it represents... Um, continuous data here. And so 39.5 separates the first class from the second, and 49.5 separates the second from the third, right? And then the height of each bar gives the frequency. So this is a 1, this is a 3, 5, what, 9, 6, 10, 8. Actually, and sometimes these numbers are actually sitting on top of here in a, in a histogram. Right. So it basically takes this data, which isn't too hard to grasp for humans. It's in ta tabular form, so that's pretty easy. And it makes it into a graph, a graph which is much easier for, for us to sort of see the big picture. Um, the other thing is, a lot of histograms, you know, when I did my x-axis down here, I chose to put in the class boundaries, right? But what you can do if you have room is you can say, all right, this is 30 to 39, this is 40 to 49. And the reason I didn't do it was because I sort of ran out of space. But a lot of time, a lot of times the bars, the x-axis on the underneath the bars represents the actual class. Uh, and sometimes there's the class boundary. And so this is this takes frequencies, counts and turns it into a table, I mean into a graph. You can also go relative frequencies, which we did last chapter, right? Where we convert each one of these, free, this 1 is actually 2.4%, this 5 is actually 11.9% of the total data values. And so you can take that and take your relative frequency and turn it into a histogram as well. Right? And it makes it visual. And the thing to point out is if you look at these two graphs, the regular frequency histogram and the relative frequency histogram, the, the shape, you know, if you cover up this X, y, Z, yeah, sorry, I'm going through all my letters. If you cover up these, this y-axis here, you can't tell any difference, right? The shape is identical whether you're doing the actual frequency or the relative frequencies. Um, and again, the nice thing about the relative frequencies is that you can compare um, populations of different sizes. Right. But notice here we have the counts and here we have the percentages. That's the only difference between these two. Um, and so those were the histograms for the male score. So let's look at the scores for the females. Right? And again, the classes are the same, so I still have my boundaries, 39.5, 49.5, on and on. Um, and this first group, zero, there's none in there, so there's no bar for this class. One, four, so this is now one, a four, a six, a nine, a six, and a four. All right, very easy. Easy to uh, create. Actually, it's, you know, if you're doing it by hand, it gets a little crooked, but... Um, You'd be usually be using software, and uh, StephenStats.com shows you how to create these with um, Excel, SPSS, Minitab, and a few others. Um, okay, so by the way, when you look at normal distributions, now you can really sort of we can describe what a normal distribution looks like. 
right? It should be symmetric and bell shaped. This is a normal distribution. It's bell shaped, there's one peak that goes down and up in about the same symmetric fashion. If you take a normal distribution and sort of smear this this way, data to the left value, you get what's known as skewed left. And if you smear it the other way, you get skewed right. And if there's more than one um, mode, you get a bimodal distribution, which looks like this one. And then a uniform distribution um, has a histogram that's relatively flat. Now, it might not be perfectly flat. It's hard to get a perfectly flat um, uniform distribution. But this is, if you looked at this um, histogram, you'd say, well, that represents a uniform distribution. And so and the idea is, and by the way, distributions come in all different shapes and sizes. These are not the only five options. Um, so if we were to look at the um, frequency or the um, histograms for the test scores for the males and the test scores for the females, if you looked at this first one for the males, it's a little tricky. It certainly is not normal, right? Not normal. There's two peaks. So you might want to go bimodal because we have that peak and that peak. That doesn't really look like this bimodal up here, does it? There are two modes. And then the other thing, it, it also looks like it might be skewed left, like this one. So that's why I say maybe bimodal skewed left, or skewed, right? Um, and that's the problem. Not all distribu you know, distributions have infinitely many shapes and um, sizes, and so they don't all fall into one category. So, you know, if you have to mix and match your terminology, that's fine, too. Um, females, this distribution, that is actually pretty close to normal. I mean, it would be really normal uh, if it wasn't there. That would be perfectly symmetric, right? Because what, what do we have? We have, like, goes up the same. These are the same values. Yeah, so that's nice and symmetric. It's bell-shaped. There's one peak. So this is uh, pretty darn normal. We have a uh, more stringent test for normalcy later on, but right now, just by a first impression eyeballing it, that looks pretty normal. Um, when we look at these averages and the types of distributions, the thing about a normal distribution is that the mean, median, and mode all occur right sort of at the balance point of the distribution. Right? And when a when a distribution is skewed left, it means it starts kind of normal, but then the mean and the median fall to the left of the mode. All right, so the mode is the highest point, but because we have all these scores over here, that drags the mean and the median left of the mode. And skewed right is just the opposite direction. The mean and the median get skewed to the right. That's skewed right. All right, so this is a short chapter, 3.2. Um, we're finished here. I hope to see you back at 3.3. .3. See ya.